Hmm. Oh, okay. That's what the eggplant emoji stands for. to Ruminations on Jet Space Magazine. My name is Arson Nikki. I'm Morgan Bradshaw. And today we have a lot to go over yep. in discussing episode three of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season three. Woo, woo, woo. Oh my goodness. London Bradshaw, we just launched right into it from the get-go. They <sighs> waste no time after coming back from Thorgy's elimination to talk crap about each other and that is the television that we're here for we go right from thorgy's drawing on the mirror gross. straight into i know right <laughs> Ooh, jesus gross <laughs> um straight into this uh fight between shangela and milk and kennedy that sets us up for the rest of the story arc in the episode i don't know about you but in the first 15 minutes, I could pretty much tell where this was going in terms of a win versus an elimination. I think the editors do a not so subtle job sometimes of letting us know where we're going. And this week was a perfect example for me. One way that they are keeping us in the dark, in my opinion, though, is uh, this conspiracy theory that we talked about in the last episode. And the conspiracy theory that has me winning in all of the team arson votes versus you. Um, now, that we've had the public's opinion what do you think of what we're getting from that conspiracy theory London Bradshaw if I had to pick a lipstick it would be Arson's lipstick <laughs> because she is throwing shade today so I definitely think that when Arson was talking to me about last week how BB Zahara Benet was a mole I didn't believe it so I wanted to have a vote on YouTube and apparently I'm losing. Yes, you are. Yes, very we know, badly. We know. The only thing I'm winning is I wore a Versace-inspired look last you week. You sure did. That's the only winning, so thank you. <laughs> um, I actually, I will admit, I am wrong. And I definitely believe that uh, Arson is right. As always. Yep, there it is. We get the applause. We get it. You're, what changed your mind, London Bradshaw? We get it. You're a model. <laughs> um, uh, I definitely think that uh, she is a mole. She is always safe. She's never in the bottom. She's never winning. Uh, she did win season one, but she's not winning this season. So, and there's things that you could see with her facial expressions and when she looks at the audience and the other queens, she's always clocking the other queens and finding like what a winner should look like. I don't know if anybody um, in the real world sees that, but that's what I see. And so I think that she definitely 100% is a mole. Uh, today on season three, uh, sorry, All Stars episode three. She said, <laughs> "Keep it going, keep it going." <laughs> she said, uh, "I think that Kennedy and Trixie should be in the top." Like, who says that? Like, who makes that decision? She does. So, I don't think she would say that if she didn't have an opinion about who should be a winner. Who should be in the top? She's just so confident. Yeah. And she just, she's kind of, you're right, she's sitting in this sort of middle ground and I'm just not sure what to make of her. I mean, I am pretty sure of what to make of her, but I'm glad that you're on board. Thank you for admitting what we were all thinking. Moving right along, um, it's also awesome to see our hometown heroine, uh, Ben De La Creme, in the top not once, not twice, but three times right out the gate. And it's awesome to see that she's really only had to eliminate uh, someone once because it's clearly taking a toll on her having to choose. Um, uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's nice to see other queens taking that fall for her because as we can see on the internet uh, with All Stars, sometimes being the one to eliminate a queen is not always working out in your favor. So congratulations, Ben. You're doing fantastic. We love you. I hope you're watching this. You are absolutely killing it this year. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Alrighty, now it's time for Out of the Closet, where we judge and judge and judge some more. The looks that we saw on this week's episode. London, I'm quite curious. 
What was your favorite look from this week's episode? Uh, this new wig that I bought from the store the other day. Okay, um, moving on to the actual episode. <laughs> uh, I actually definitely enjoyed Chi Chi Devane. Okay. Her runway look. Uh, it was very Diana Ross uh, before, like, you know, she was 40. And um, with the hair. <laughs> yeah, with the afro. And then I just was living for the gown that she had. And then all of a sudden, it was like not one, but not four, but like three feet of hair just rolling down her back. So and then what got me the most was the ring, the nose ring that was connected to the earring. Because you know that if anybody was performing with that kind of stuff, it'd be ripped right out. Especially her. She's an acrobatic queen. So I feel like she really like dialed it down with the look. And she was like, I'm going to run for a pageant. You know? Yeah. You feel me? Totally. You feeling it? I'm, We're I'm feeling it. feeling you. Feeling me. So congrats. She's also here in Seattle, so congrats, Chi Chi, if you're watching this. Uh, I think you did a really great job with your outfit tonight. Sure did. So congrats, congrats, congrats. Uh, who is yours? Uh, my favorite uh, was probably Ben De La Creme's runway, and here's why. Um, they got it right when they said that uh, in order to do a wig reveal runway, you have to take it to the next level. You can't just do one. You got to do at least two. Some people brought three, which I thought was super gaggy, but the thing that got Ben for me is the reveal into the full hair dress that for me was kind of reminiscent of Jade Jolie's infamous yes. uh, <laughs> dress on her season that was like, whoa, but like, this was a much better version. Don't get me wrong. That was not a read. This was like a step up on the next level. She's um, reading upward. Yeah. Up. No, no one uh, had a reveal on that level where it was like, whoa, we got so much hair. So congratulations, Ben. That was a fantastic look. Now moving on to the other side of things, London. Uh, 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 uh. What was your worst look? <laughs> uh, Ronald McDonald, is that you? Oh my God, just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the worst look that I, okay. So, um, before I say this, I'm not reading people. I just didn't like Milk's runway look. That's and it reasonable. wasn't her outfit. It was her hair. So, yes, she did a really great job revealing into it. And, yes, I love the little dolls with the extra hair pulling out. But you have to make sure that you cover the hair when you want to do a reveal like that. Because you can see the plastic root that she said was on there. So, I definitely think that she did do a good job. Her face was on with all the little nicks and knacks of the dress on her face, and especially on her lips right here. I know that we're talking about the worst, but her hair was, unfortunately, I think, the worst. It was pretty unforgivable, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. What about you? What did you think? You know, I had to think long and hard about this one because, long you know, we had some hard. great looks, but we had some real clunkers. And the one for me tonight was Shangela's Runway. Um, I totally get the corn reference from her season where she came out with the... Yeah. I, I totally understand it. Top um, comment, yeah, yeah. yeah. However, uh, the look looked a little bit cheap. And when you're on All Stars 3, people are really expecting you to bring it to the next level. And it just looked kind of like, oh, I went to the craft store and made this like the afternoon of especially with like the way that the wig looked with the popcorn in the hair like i don't get me wrong the joke is funny but it's also like one joke that we see at the very beginning of the look it's like for me it was like alexis michelle's entirely green uh number in yeah. her season it was like okay we get it like it's a reference whatever move on and i just thought the joke fell flat for me i thought she looked like that character from Moana. That's what I thought she yeah. would like. Yeah. Sorry, Shangela. You've done better elsewhere, so maybe we'll see you do better next time. Now it's time for the tops and the bottoms, in which we discuss the performances that we saw on this week's episode. London, I have to ask you, what was your favorite performance? Arson, I have to respond with my favorite performance. Yes, you do. Uh, Trixie Freaking fucking Mattel. Hats off to Yes, you, hats man. off, girl. You were uh, definitely stepped on, you know, by giant gallons of milk. But other than that, she did a really great job. I definitely thought she was in character. And she, the thing that uh, Jeffrey Boyd, someone, Hamilton, the unreal guy, he definitely pointed out that uh, she wasn't looking at him, and I definitely like that, because if you're gonna be a fake bitch, you have to be 100% fake, and that's what she brought. She brought it from the beginning to the end, 
Yes, she thinks that she got shined on. Yes, she was safe this week. But I thought she nailed it. She should have been in the top. I I think that she should have been in the top three. But, I mean, you got to make choices, RuPaul, so I understand. But Trixie nailed it. And then uh, from beginning to finish when she was on the phone, just constantly on her cell phone. And I think that's what a quick coach does. It's like you don't want to listen to anybody, you just be on your phone, you know? Just like when I'm on my date for Valentine's Day. If I don't like them, I'm just going to be on my phone. Sounds reasonable know? to me. Arson, what about you? Uh, let's see. My favorite performance. Oh, my gosh. The lip sync from Kennedy Davenport. The lip sync for your legacy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, first of all, I'm a huge Lord Stan. If you are a Lord Stan out there, I see you. I love you. You get what's about to happen. So she does the lip sync. She doesn't have to do the splits. She doesn't have to do any cartwheels. She doesn't have to do any of that. She just means the words. And that is actually a really hard thing to do. She didn't need the stunts. She didn't need the reveals. She did do a reveal, which was like fine. But for me, the heart of the lip sync was feeling Lord's words purely and honestly. And that is a really challenging thing to do. I don't think people understand that uh, channeling the message of the song can be a real challenge. And just having that be the star of the show is a huge choice that Kennedy really delivered this time around. So uh, I like can't wait to watch that on YouTube over and over again. Um, now we got to talk about the worst ones. London, I'm curious, what was the worst performance for you this week? Chi Chi Devane. Uh... Unlike other people, you have to have chemistry when working with people. And Shangela's very, uh, she's an improvative queen. She knows how to joke, laugh. She's been on TV before, so I'm sure she throws improv in there all the time, which she nailed in this episode. Unlike her partner, Chi Chi Devane, uh, in both ways, polyamorous and on RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, she did not deliver. I don't think so. Um, others on YouTube think that Arson and I don't have chemistry, so we're watching you. Otherwise, I think that, are you okay? Yeah, we're great, keep oh. going. <laughs> are we looking at that person? Exactly. Should we do it together? Moving on. <laughs> That's chemistry. That's what we did. So sorry, Chi Chi, yes, your uh, runway looked great, but I don't think that maybe your uh, character was very polyamorous slash chemistry with Shangela's. Arson. Yes. Worst performance, go. Oh my goodness. For me, it was milk. Absolutely. I don't know what she was thinking when she was in the uh, green room and they were talking and she said, oh, like, I can't believe that I would be in the bottom. Girl, you were in the bottom. We see you. The number one rule of improv is always say yes. Number two, don't step on your partner's toes. And she was stepping on Trixie's toes the entire time time you broke one of the big rules and for that she was definitely in the bottom performances yeah. for me she didn't give trixie any time to shine and i understand you want to win the challenge but sometimes too far is much too far as the judges told her on the runway this evening so i don't know what else to say milk but you didn't deliver it for me this week Now it's time for us to take the kettle off of the stove, pour it into the cup, and let it steep for three and a half minutes. No more, no less, because it is time for us to talk about the tea, the shadiest moments that we found on this episode. London, I must ask you, what was the shadiest moment that you saw? <laughs> oh. I definitely think that, <laughs> sorry, when, did anybody else see when Kennedy Davenport said, I'm just going to do what I've said from the beginning, and that's just assess the whole thing, right? And just make my own professional decision. Because she didn't want to talk to anybody. Exactly. When she said that she was like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, her mind was already made up. Let's go from the beginning of the episode when Milk told her to step down, but instead she won the challenge and stepped Oops. right up, right the fuck up, and was like, oh, my mind's already made up. I think that's real shady. And she said she wanted to go by the judge's critiques. Uh, Milk's critiques weren't go home, Kennedy Davenport. Uh, so maybe someone else should have went home, but I feel like she was, you know, uh, what's the word? Bitter. So, ooh, ooh. sorry, Kennedy. Ooh. But also, sorry, Milk. <laughs> maybe you won't use a plastic toilet paper roll as a wig container. Oh my goodness. Arson Nikki. What? What, 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 what? Who was your most shadiest moment? 
The shadiest moment for me was when Trixie said to Milk, I'm not gonna be safe and cry because that would be, you know, inappropriate, but. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. She knew from the get go, especially with that confessional that also happened at the very beginning of the episode where she referenced that same thing. She knew that Milk was in trouble. And as soon as Milk was declared in the bottom, oh my goodness, Trixie would not be able to help herself. And I would be in the exact same situation. She's stirring the pot, stirring the tea and giving us the television that we want and deserve. So thank you, Trixie, because I think you stoked the fires of Milk tears and that is what I came here for. Nothing to cry over spilled milk, huh milk? <laughs> well, that was a fantastic episode. I cannot wait to see what happens next week because as the trailer showed us, we are on to the Snatch Game. Woo! Oh my goodness. The Snatch Game is an episode that everyone looks forward to. I cannot wait to see who the queens are going to do. Can you guess who the queens are going to imitate? Let us know in the comments because I'm really curious. We have a whole new set of imitations and impersonations to see, and I wanna know who you think is going to do who. And also, uh, it's a good thing to note that I am not going to be here uh, next week. Thank uh, God. I, well, okay, leave it for later, girl. Um, I have another gig that night, but we have a fantastic extra special guest host, and I cannot wait for you to see who it is. Um, but we'll just leave you on that little teaser. How does that sound? That's why she's impersonating Ronald McDonald tonight. <laughs> You're just gonna keep on going, <laughs> keep on going. Well, on that note, thank you so much for watching this this week's episode of Ruminations with Jetspace Magazine. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment who you think the queens are gonna impersonate next week. Please do, we'd yes. love to hear from you. My name is Arson Nikki. And I'm Linda Bradshaw. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Take care, we'll see you next week. Deuces.